So it looks like the day markers happened at the start of each uh, in-story day. I do like having the clean cut between the cat and the uh, title, though. That's good. For archival purposes. Bolted from the inside, just as I left it last night. Oh. So the cat is also a mystery. As I suspected, we must have dreamt of that wretched looking cat. Or did I we? Must say I'm relieved. Right then. Let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard's shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillett. Okay, marked. The wardrobe looks old. I've hung my dress aside from that. I've stored a box. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. Maybe we should ask, just in case. I don't want to take... I don't wish to take... We already used the jug of water, so... <clears throat> Good morning, Miss Bateman. Good day, Stanley. Stanley is yet to set the fire for today. No. To go past the door. At least we'd show him the glove. You lose a glove, buddy? Do you recognize this glove? I can't say I do. I don't wear them. They make me hands sweat too much. Never. Fair enough. Did you sleep well, Miss Bateman? Not really. I have the rather queer recollection of a cat entering my room last night. A cat, you say? Yes, an odd-looking grey one. I must have been dreaming as I locked the door and windows before I went to sleep. I saw a similar cat in the lavatories while searching for Mr. Tillett. Ah, Herbert. Oh, he's a harmless... That's thing. a good name for a cat. He comes in now and then searching for scraps. Indeed. Seeing him in the lavatories must have conjured up the strange dream. The mind is capable of manifesting frightful things, Miss Bateman. Oh, that doesn't sound like something that's going to bite us in the ass later. Has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Crisp. I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving today? His train will get in around midday. Oh, and he's still coming with more money, I think. Excavation equipment. Oh, I... Give me a shovel. I want a shovel. Shovels. Yo, more than one shovel. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the... Ah! Any such bulky items. They're gonna steal my shovels. Is it safe to do such a thing? I can assure you the local folk are not thieves, Miss Bateman. That's not what I... Now, now, say nothing more of it. Thank you, Stanley. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Oh, we do we? Miss Bateman? Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. I've been tossing and turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. Oh no. What on earth are you talking about? As you know, I like to run an honest establishment. And well, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. Oh. Lois don't like to talk about it? Many here do. There are stories tied to that place. Oh, it's cursed. Okay, go figure. This life is that some stones are best left unturned. Old Leonard's shoulder is someone to be wary of too. Oh, that's why Tillman pieced out, probably. You'd best avoid him. Why lie to me about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass. I know. I feel dreadful. But why? Ooh. Sorry. I really can't tell well, you. This is because of the game. I'm just genuinely tired. You'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you. Honestly, I love the voice performances. These are fantastic. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. Puzzles? In a point and click game? Woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, seek out Mr. Shoulder. He can tell you more. 
Where is Hobbs Barrow? I don't know. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. So he just knows that it exists. I now find that hard to believe. The moors are vast, lass. I'd tend not to go wandering out there. A grown man could lose himself and not be seen again. Hmm. Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. A man not to be trusted. It could just be a flake. Where or easily distracted. I can't say for sure. As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. And certainly not in the village itself. Might someone around Bewley be able to help? Oh, that might be the guy who ran off into the the mist the night the first night. Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. All right, we'll probably explore the town first and then start heading outside of it. It seems I may be fighting a battle against some sort of local superstition. Is there a single barrow in England that doesn't have some ghastly tale attached to it? Hogwash. All of it. I have a few hours until Kenneth arrives. I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. I do want to check if we can interact with the windows now that the rain stopped. Because of the window box. No, okay. Pulling the bell would... Thought we might have a chance since Stanley had pieced out. He looks like a rather shady carrot. Well, let's talk to him first if he's a shady carrot. Oh, bird! My name is Thomasina, and you are... Now then, that's none of your concern, love. What do you do around here? Hey, oh, you're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard, dig the graves. <laughs> that's cool. What can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Quite. Thanks, buddy. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? I don't know out about no Le No, okay, it doesn't know anything about him, what okay. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Not to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows, then? Don't concern yourself. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around, dear love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. Goodbye. ta -ra. These flowers look pretty. Someone must take good care of them. the alley for any other evidence we might have missed. Looks like we're good. So it was M for map, right? I guess we unlock stuff on the list as we visit it. The little whelp looks determined to slaughter the very air itself. The young woman looks extremely bored by it all. Hello. E yes. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. Okay, the bored yawn is a nice touch. That was great. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the Lambton Worm. The Lambton Worm? What is the Lambton Worm? It's gonna come back and get us all. John Lambton thought he killed it at the River Ware, but my father told me it still lives. We must all be prepared. The Lambton Worm isn't real, Douglas. The Lambton wor Worm is absolutely going to turn out to be real. Not true. I saw it slithering out by the beck. Like a giant eel, it were. I ran home so fast, I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. My brother has a vivid imagination. Children often do at his age. I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Douglas. This lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. 
To the contrary. Do you like living in Bewley? Yeah, I do. Are you from the city? I'm from a long way away. You must have come on the train. I love watching all the steam. Oh, train kid. Awesome. Have you been on the train yourself? No, miss. Our oh. parents don't have the money for train tickets. Father says we have all we need here in Bewley. <sighs> Perhaps this nice lady would like to take you away with her on the train. <laughs> no, I need to stay and protect Bewley from the lantern worm. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. Have you heard? I guess that's a no. Hobbs Barrow. What's that? A local burial mound. Our parents don't let us wander far from the village. What's a burial mound? Don't you mind about that, Douglas. Who's Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. Don't you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master swordsman by then. <sighs> Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Good day. Hello, miss. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Betty. Nice to meet you, Betty. So, Betty and Douglas? My brother is practicing his sword fighting technique. I'm to watch him until he tires himself out. I'm tireless! This time last month, it were all about his teaspoon collection. This month, it's swords. Do you know a man named Leonard? Oh, the barking's a nice touch, too. Are you sure? Yeah, the sound design is yes. solid. What do you know? I don't know if I believe her, but okay. Our parents don't like us talking to strangers, miss. So you know of it? No. Are you sure? Yes. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Alright. Oh. Quite a fine bit. I don't think anyone is home. At least not currently, okay. Where's this one go? This house looks A warehouse. I don't think anyone is home. Unless they posted on the door, yeah. A storeroom of some kind. It's rather empty. A storeroom. I don't know further exits that way. Or was that dead tree anything? No. The door has been bored. <sighs> hmm. No one here. I don't think anyone is home. I'll probably check out the church before I check out Crozier's. The woman has a kind face. The woman has a kind face. Sorry, I keep cutting stuff off. Oh. A fine assortment of baked goods. A lovely treat for those who enjoy such things. I'm gonna wish I hadn't spent my money, uh... In memory of Peter Black. In memory of William Ager. In memory of Mabel Hurst. In memory of Benjamin Garkham. In memory of Millicent Smith. In memory of George Paxton. In memory of... Kind of where the three have white borders and the other ones don't. In memory of Percival Wait. Roach. In memory of Rome. In memory of Romeo Hegg. Barnaby wasn't the name of the till that we were trying to talk to, so... In memory of Henry Crozier. The trusty trowel, the barrow digger's best friend. Excuse me, do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? You help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of Free course, trowel. Thank you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Note yourself. Put the trowel back when we're done with it. The woman has a... Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? 
What kind of cakes do you have? I have some lovely Bakewell puddings. The sweetest marriage of almond and jam. Sounds good. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Alas, I'm not carrying any money with me. That's oh, well. unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry. I, I can't give them away for free. The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. All right. Uh, we'll continue the conversation in a minute. Uh, we got to run an ad to get rid of ad, uh, run an ad to get rid of pre-roll ads. So three minutes. Uh, if you want to go take a break, it's probably a good time to do it. I'll see you in a few. I feel like we might only get through this first day on the prologue tonight. I'm more tired than I thought I was, but My we'll keep pushing. Thomasina. There's enough town to explore. We should get a fair amount done. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. DePlancy. Likewise, pet. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. DePlancy. About me? <laughs> what would you possibly want to know about me? What do you do with the church? I've been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not that sounds like somebody trying to sell me a cake would say. County. What can you tell me about St. Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? It's been standing well, the bottom of it's pretty neat. I do like an old church. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. Do we get to go in? The door is open. Hell yeah. Like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. DePlancy. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? <coughs> yes, I know Leonard. That seems like hesitation. What do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the... There's also a side path off to the... Off of the path between the station and town, so... What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood. That might be what side of the side path is. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. Where can I find Father Roach again? At this time of... Thank you. Okay, just get a repeat on it if you need to. Hobbs okay. Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Okay. This leads to the church tower, I presume. Take a quick look around before we exit either way. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife, and sister. John Purchase, dearly beloved husband of Florence. So the Tillots have been here for a while, presumably. Forever in light, Anne Kemp. Joseph Davis. Samuel Bryden. Death is only a shadow across the path to heaven. Here cool lies epitaph. Elizabeth Farnaby. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. Uh-oh. William Paxton, modest and gentle of heart. We have a trowel. We could learn some things. Maybe a barrow digger, but I'm no grave robber. Maybe we need more inspiration to do so. Oh, cool bench. A fine spot to take a rest.
a little bit that's going to move the clock forward, but... Okay, there's an achievement for Tega sitting at the bench. That's cool. Sometimes you just gotta relax. I've seen cairns like this all over England. Quite common. The locals might be alarmed if I dismantle their cairn. Just wanted to poke it. The moors continue for miles in this direction. I don't wish to lose my way. Okay. Just seeing if there's any, like, single rock on the cairn that might have its own interaction. Rabbit. Yeah, the addition of the wildlife is a nice touch, too. I'm not sure if these are poisonous or edible. Yeah, but it's a fairy circle. Don't fuck with it. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Okay. I better not touch them. They could be poisonous. All right. So other side of the church. And we actually we should probably like check inside first. Then we'll check the other outside of the church. Hey, somebody left a rosary or something. Look at these box pews. Although, if we're in the UK, like, wouldn't that be Anglican? Do they, do, maybe it's just a pendant and not a rosary. Yeah. Is that a necklace? Hmm. Someone has left a necklace hanging here. A silver cross. Sterling by the look of it. Yoink. Maybe I can reunite it with its owner. Okay. A memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. That's a lot of vicars. In compartments that can be locked. I've seen a similar design in other Norman churches around England, but this is a particularly impressive example. That has me worried about the locking aspect. Like, are we going to get locked in with somebody? Locked. Okay. Locked as well. I think they all might be. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Stained glass depictions of various biblical scenes. It's not my specialist area. Otherwise, in other words, what you would expect. The local vicar sacrifices the newborns. Like you do. Time for such things. Okay. I thought we may, maybe we could get a closer look, but oh well. Check the tower. Might be locked. It's locked. Okay. Maybe we get a key later. If she knows anything about the necklace. Excuse me, I found this necklace inside the church. Is it yours? No, pet. Perhaps someone left it behind yesterday. You keep hold of it for now. I'll ask around at the next service. Are you sure? I trust you. Sounds good. If I gotta repel a vampire with this, I'm gonna be a little bothered. Okay, uh, crossroads. Okay, the whistling's gonna be the... Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilized ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. Hey, we can come back and hit it with a pick. Stay away from that! Okay. Don't touch it! It's bad luck to touch the ammon's horn! Got you. I'm serious! Uh... Fine. Thank you for your concern. This young fellow looks miserable. She has a puckish little face. Damp rag dolls have been laid out to dry in the dreary sun. Shrub. Sweet little flowers. I do enjoy the charm. I do enjoy the charm of a babbling beck. Okay, so a beck is a brook. Is a stream. Hello there. My name is a creek. Is a creek. How are you? You aren't. <laughs> Fuck this kid. Oh. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. Goodbye. Good day, little one. What's your name? Hello, miss. I'm Jane and this is my brother Wally. 
Lovely to meet you. I'm Thomasina. I'll introduce you to my dolls, but they're drying out at the moment. Understandable. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Hey, remember when free-flowing water was good for drinking and cleaning? Lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Don't look up what they've done to the Thames. Never mind plenty of other water sources. About the Ammon's Horn. Daddy said we should never touch it. It will make the god angry. The god, you say? Ammon, of course. We'll roll with it. How wonderful. I'll be sure not to touch it. I wouldn't want to anger the gods. Sensible. Wally doesn't say much. He's mardy with me because he's bored, miss. He thinks he's too old to play with dolls. I see. What does he want to play with? Swords? Where are your parents? They are picking apples from the big tree in our yard. Daddy and I sell them at the market. That sounds nice. But they don't it does sound nice. The bet, as long as we don't touch the almond's horn. Okay. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Nobody knows this fucker. Does he go by another name? Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... Jane! No, miss. Oh. Are you sure? I swear. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Well, that's one potential witness of it. Alright. So the preacher's probably in the woods here. Or whatever. You okay, buddy? No. That's gonna definitely be no. I wonder if this is rotoscoped and painted over. It's just an interesting, interesting animation style. Okay, I thought it was gonna be worms or something. That's fine. Not so jolly now. Very sorry. Oh, the shame. This malaise will not pass. Oh, the nausea. I need your help, young lady. Tell oh. me what you need. Let the blood from my arm. Uh, with Excuse what? Cut me. I beg you. The vicar's spectacles. Also, shout out to the bird hanging out at the top there. Ouch! The broken lens is extremely sharp. I guess that's what we're cutting his uh, wrist with. Oh, can we grab with the handkerchief? Oh. And actually touch the spectacles. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. This should work. Okay. Oh. I don't wish to look too closely. You're no fun. The vicar looks dreadfully ill. Are you sure this is the only way, Father? I beg you. It's the only cure for this torturous malady. Sure. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I don't think that's correct. I shall do as you ask, Father. I feel like maybe you could go get the flowers or something, too. There might be an herbal remedy around somewhere. Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I don't know about that. Eric Roach, Vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. What ails you, Father Roach? I... I just ate a rotten berry, that's all. That doesn't sound true. For my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. 
I wish we had met in different circumstances. Are you from Beaulieu originally? I was born in our very own St. Edmunds. It's quite the story. Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. And lo, did her waters break right there and then in that pew. One could say that you were born into your role, Father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. St. Edmunds is a fine... Well, yeah, we didn't actually go back to the bush, so I might want to check it out to see if there's something we can grab. In good shape, but our congregation is always willing to lend a hand in the Lord's name. What is it like being the vicar here? Every day is a blessing, my child. I have a great love for our parish, and the Lord looks after us. What about your congregation? Numbers have fallen over the years, I must say. But those that remain are faithful and full of his spirit. Overall depopulation or just lack of attendance? I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register. Oh, there we go. I remember it now. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you waited me so. Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Okay, so it's its own option. I'm going to keep looking around town for a bit. It's a famous local landmark. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. Especially now that we know where he is. It's a quiet town. The railway line, which I presume you arrived by, is the only news of note we've had here for years. I've heard the new station has received a mixed reaction. <laughs> I've heard many a debate, it's true. But my role is not to adjudicate on that matter. I'm very busy in my own work, you see. Fair enough. All right. So, yeah, we'll come back to you when we're ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Lord be with you. No doubt home to many a woodland creature. wonder if we can bait something out of it later. I have no desire. It doesn't look like we solved the broken glass, so. I shall see you later this evening, gents. Oh, hey, guys. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. I'm gonna knock him the fuck Hi, out. Sir. A pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. Who's this asshole? Wait. He disappeared. Some... Lady, you're blushing. I most certainly am not. The men look like they've spent many a long day exposed to the harsh moorland weather. The men look... The men... Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Okay, just today. Says who? Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. Oh, fair enough. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, I. You're not from round here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. That's fair. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. Okay. These are his woods. Aye, his lordship owns most of the land round Beoli. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Beaulieu. Ah, uh, not far away. I didn't see which one talked, so... Like I think it was the guy on the right was Owen, but... Visitors. Now please leave us to our work. 
Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? No. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. If you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. Oh, really? The restoration work. How intriguing. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like Oh, really? It. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Cool. I'll let him get on with it. I'll let him. See you. Alright, so either we're breaking in or otherwise butter up this pants with guy. Alright, so we didn't take the south route yet. I did want to go back to the river and see if I could do anything with the uh, flowers. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. I don't think we took any. Okay. All right, south. That pops out by these houses. This was the halfway between the. I don't think anyone is home. The trains. Okay, so my instinct that the woods were that path that we passed on the way in were correct. Book it off! <laughs> yeah, sure, we get at least one of those. The unmistakable charm of old Cyril. We check back at the station too. See if anybody's hanging out. Hey! Oh! Arthur Tillett is the guy at the station. Fantastic. Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plow and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Correct. Then it's all a blur. Oh. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. About last night. What were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I don't really know. I wasted my cake's money on this man. Oh, I... No, no, I, I know not about him. No, not about Leonard Shoulder. Thanks. If you say so, perhaps I am mistaken. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. Probably. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. I, I don't remember out. Hmm. About last night. You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember... I came here to do archaeology, not detective work. Nothing. But you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. Incorrect. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I A sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. Oh, we could show him the glove, too, since he, if he was in the alley, he would have seen it. Blocked. Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. How's your headache faring? 
It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a Be sure to drink plenty of circle around me skull. Sorry, I, sometimes I misclick the right uh so you work here. Hi. Bewley station master at your service. <laughs> not just yet, thank you. Oh. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. I I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. Tickets mostly. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow. I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. What give you someone to, some to, some to chat to, I guess. Oh, you've heard of his lordship, then? Yes. Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children, hires young men to work his land. He's well-liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tiller. He's hiding something. Kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lord. The lord is, I mean. He looks after us, provided we leave him. Okay, he's absolutely hiding something. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Okay. Grief. But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. Farewell for now. Tara. Nope, that is the same cat. So the thing's absolutely following me, isn't it? All right. Oh yeah, we didn't check out. We'll check in with the uh, the blacksmith. Good day. Yes. Mr. Crozier, I presume. Aye. George Crozier, at your service. My name is Thomasina. Hi, can I help you? Are you a Bewley native, Mr. Crozier? Aye, born and bred. This were my father's forge before mine. I think we saw that name in the uh, graveyard. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes. I should say, yeah, horseshoes are probably the best way. You let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Oh. Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, aye. Old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? No, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. But do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Can't tell you out more than that. That doesn't narrow down. You, Mr. Crozier. <sighs> do you know of a local land... I feel like I should recheck with the There's kids a about Panswick. Out on the moors, lass. <clears throat> Too many to put a name to. Not a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. What can you tell me about Bewley? We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. I've heard about London. So she is from the city. Plenty of factories there. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next one is tomorrow. How handy. Delightful. Unless your vice is cabbages, they'll be not to interest a young lady. <laughs> I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? His lordship commands much respect around here, lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Fantastic specimen. It's Mr. Crozier's forge. The blacksmith is right here. I've no need to go inside. 
Alas, it is not mine to take. Let's see if maybe we get a closer inspection. All right, let's check with the kids. The young woman looked. Three pans work. Good day. Hello, miss. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. Have you ever been there? Evans, no. So... Villages aren't allowed there. Why not? Oh, we didn't show what's his fuck the glove at the station, so I want to do that too. Goodbye. So that might have been Panswick who was uh, piecing out last night. Not shoulder. Yes? What do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweets <sighs> once. My friend says that Lord Panswick has special trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. Unlikely. That's true, miss. No, your friend's I full of shit. That's very unlikely. Me too. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Hello. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Now to say, except don't be sniffing around his lordship's manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. Goodbye. ta -ra. We're absolutely going to be sniffing around that manor eventually. I didn't mean to go to the alley, my bad. I guess that's the big apple tree they were talking about earlier. Nobody home. Unless somebody else has a tree with stuff growing on it. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna need the the vicar. Fair enough. Is there anybody else to talk to about? Yeah, because I don't think Stan maybe snuck back and all this to ask about. Nope. Okay. There's the woman at the church, and I think that was it. Oh, and the father himself. Father, vicar, minister, whatever. Hello. Good day. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. But okay. for whom and to what god I ask? Oh. Faith? <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our god-given ruler. Stay away from him, pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. I certainly don't intend to. Why did you call Lord Panswick? Oh, there's a little more, okay. He hides in that manner of his and cares not for his people. Typical politician, oh, honestly. But in the pews, you know. What kind of stories? That he shoots people on sight. Anyone that strays onto Panswick Manor. Good grief. Yet he will walk into the plow and furrow and bar ale for all and be hailed as our protector. <laughs> I answer to God and God alone. Forgive me, pet. I shouldn't get so worked up. Not at all. I appreciate your honesty, Mrs. Deplancy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. I feel like I should be asking around the uh, asking around about the necklace too. Never mind. Okay. Do you recognize this glove? Sorry, I don't. Is this yours? Oh, that's beautiful. I'd never be allowed such a pretty thing. Do you recognize this? Don't miss! Ooh. 
I ended up using a glove with anybody too. I don't have any gloves. Is this yours? No, not mine. With the kids by the the back. That we're gonna ask about stuff. Is this yours? I wonder how pants work. I wish. Do you recognize this glove? Uh no. Sorry. You know, I might as well show them the gravedigger too. Why not? He's a little abrasive, but it, it's not like he's trying to ruin me, so. No. Is this yours? No. What do you know about Lord Panswick? I heard he owns the whole county. Have you met him? No. He lives out on the moors somewhere. But everyone does what he tells them to. Why is that? Because he has a lot of money. Goodbye. Kid breaks it down immediately. I can't think of anything else. To... I can't think of... Nothing to be gained from pants or chat there. Alright, so... Show the gravedigger stuff. We gotta ask... Or, yeah, we're gonna show what's this fuck's the glove, Tillman. Till it, not Tillman. Is this yours? What do you think? Do you recognize this glove? What are you showing me that for? Does it look like I'd wear something like that? I'm just trying all my options, sir. I guess I could take the stuff over to the workers, too. It's kind of a long shot, but... Oh, nope, not there. And then coming back, we can just loop this way back to the uh, woods. It's fine. Do you recognize this glove? Never seen it before in my life. Is this yours? See, that's especially weird since he was supposedly in the alley. Fancy like that. Okay. Yeah, we'll check with the work crew on those two items and then... Oh, the fox. I almost missed it. I was blinking. Ooh. Oh, oh. Is this yours? No. Okay. Is this yours? No. No. Do you recognize this glove? Fine stitching. Fine stitching indeed. An item of some considerable taste. Indeed. But I'm afraid I don't recognize it. Why do you ask? Never mind. I found this necklace inside the church. Do you know who it belongs to? Many in our congregation wear such things. I'll announce it at the next service. Do you mind if I keep hold of it until then? Not at all. All right. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. But his take on Panswick save and then get his pulled off to Leonard's shoulders. Many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. 
Uh, big church right there, bro. To which God his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my Sorry with the pop filter adjustment God there. Listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. All right, save me. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Excellent. I don't think gonna, anything's going to happen, but follow me. Feels like as good a bookmark as any, you know. That's right, so a straight through here. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. I imagine that changes depending on whether or not you talk to her. Don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. I don't have any money. I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. Awesome. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You were doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Bro, we're not. We're, I, dust our paper, and with I asked you for like a guide job. I didn't ask you to get weird with me. On the bosom of the earth. Okay. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Which play? Uh... Doesn't sound like I've read at some point Hamlet and ooh, it could be Hamlet though getting weird about I'll say Richard. Richard the second. Correct. Ah, I guess I've had to read the other two at some point. The work of the bard is one of my favorite pastimes. Follow me. No achievement for that. Fight me. Behold the vast expanse of God's creation. That's a lot of heat. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? This is neat. I already hung out here, so. Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss. I don't know if I go on the religious bent, but maybe the spiritual bent. I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child. Oh. What happened? Thank you for subscribing to Dad Facts. He had an accident when I was very young. Uh -oh. Now, Thomasina, let's get out of the rain. Okay. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. Oh, now we're all unwise why he's in the hospital. Okay. Noise. Understood. Yes, mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I'm absolutely going to annoy the nurses. Good. Now, let's see your father. Good uh, child voice actors, like, whether it's adults voice acting the children, or if they actually got some children, like, they're doing pretty good. Mommy is crying. Daddy is sleeping. 
comatose. Mummy. So much for that. Mummy. Okay, we do have an inventory, but there's nothing in it right now. Daddy, wake up. Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina. Y yes. My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. So she's still uh, she's still working with him, uh, even in the modern day, judging by the intro. Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. That sounds like a spinal injury. We will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst Or quite a bit of a head injury. He his side at all times, I can assure you. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways, but he loves us all. Just like the U2 song. Come along now. Hey, I don't think we could exit there. No, we could we could exit there before. Okay. It was after this one. Or beyond the cairn we couldn't. You're new. She scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep oh, great. when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. Mindset. <sighs> uh, quite a walk, I'm afraid, but we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Cairn check. Everybody, share your cairns. This cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How what are you remarkable. talking about? The Devil's Toe. Okay. Beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. She'll get fed after the stream. It's fine. She's being a bug. I don't think she's picking up a microphone, but she's like crawling around right behind the chair. We didn't draw the rest of it. Oh, spacebar. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. You could call him... Papa Roach. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost. I'm surprised it took me that long to register that. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. I like the bright blue door. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. That seems fair. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. All right, shoulder check. Uh... What else do you know about Mr. Shoulder? A reclusive man. I must say I know very little about him. Does he attend services at St. Edmund's? Not regularly, if at all these days. Perhaps he feels closer to God out here on the moors. What do you make of Mr. Shoulder's residence? A sturdy construction, I'm in no doubt. The winds blow a gale out here, not to mention the pelting rain. We got enough in that in town, huh? Awful creatures, those hens. Are you talking shit on chickens? Do you know that young girl we saw? No. But I've seen her sneaking around the churchyard. The poor thing is feral. She takes off at the slightest stirring. We will bring the Lord to her. Good time. Perhaps she has her own beliefs. You said there are others like her. Primitive folk, yes. Avoid the moors in hours of darkness and don't wander too far. We're absolutely not doing that. In their company. Hmm. Do you know anything else about the Devil's Toe? Not really. I do recall it toppling over when I was a child. A few lads from Bewley rebuilt it to the best of their memories. So it hasn't stood for that long. Come now, my child. Do not joke about such matters. Why don't you like... You gotta read the room. 
I know I must love all of God's creatures, but they make such an unholy ruckus, and their talons claw at my boots. But they mean no harm, and they provide eggs. I cannot abide hen's eggs. They smell of sulfur when rotten. I'm gonna eat them before they rot. Dingus. What more can you tell me of these primitive? I guess it ties into the whole fire and brimstone thing. But they're the concern concerned of them. With them. They live out there on the very edges of this land. If you don't wander too far, you shouldn't cross their path. You mentioned that Mrs. Duplancy is worried about something at the moment. It is not my place to say. Mrs. Duplancy will tell you in good time, if she deems it fit to do so. I feel we buy some cakes. Might warm her words? up even more to us. That's fine. Question, Miss Bateman. But one I can answer, nonetheless. I am awfully fond of Cymbeline. An unusual choice. All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Wouldn't you agree? Hell yeah. Quote. Is there a Mrs. Shoulder? No. I believe Mr. Shoulder has led a life of celibacy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. A sweet little hen, plump and well-groomed. A fearsome-looking beast. A sweet little hen. Here, chuk chuk chuk. Don't encourage them. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. Hey, buddy. Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? You're no fun. Oh, all right. Achievement for chicken grabbing. A pair of thick woolen trousers. That glove looks familiar. Oh, really? I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. A woolen undergarment. Slightly damp. I have a similar one myself. So very warm. The trousers feel damp. Freshly hung or still wet from last night's rain. Hmm. That glove... I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. I wonder if I can use the glove on it to compare. The gloves are a pair. Aha! Uh -huh. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? So it was probably Shoulder or not come inside to see the me? other asshole. Mr. Shoulder has stacked blocks of wood neatly beneath this small lean-to. Very neat and tidy. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. You're no fun. Oh wait, to check the door, but whatever. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. A carved stone has been affixed. Yeah, I wanted to check that first. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <laughs> I kind of appreciate that he's quoting uh, Shakespeare instead of scripture, though. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes... Worldly man. Mad. Appreciated. Makes men mad. Uh... That feels like a fellow to me. But of these three, I've only a experienced fellow? Romeo and Juliet. I am good at this. Of the bard is presently flawless. I consider myself I'm guessing there's probably an achievement. We probably get quizzed on these throughout the game. I must say. I'm rather fond of this color. Same. Perhaps Mr. Shoulder and I share similar taste. No sign of life. None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? Well, this is going well. It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Well done. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. 
Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Alright, this will probably take us to midday. So Kenneth should show up. No, you go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. That's Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet? Correct. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. You've proven yourself to be an impeccable scholar of the Bible. Achievement bar. unlocked. Lord be with Glad you. Glad I read a fucking book a few times. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. All right. Uh, well, we'll look for more in a minute. Honestly, I'm probably just gonna, uh, I'll be back. Another free walkthrough, and it looks like we're about a third of the way through. All I wanted to judge was uh, progress. So. I don't think anything else to. I don't see anything else to inspect here, so we'll head back. But yeah, this will probably take us up to that four-hour mark, give or take. Moors, I made a new resolution. Okay. I would find oh, space bar. myself, with or without Mister Shoulder. The train. That must be Kenneth. Can't if I'll have money. Money I buys cakes. At the station. Also, you know, politeness. <laughs> Curious if she's got anything new to say. Hello. Good day. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs what? Never mind. Hmm. Father Roach asked... Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll be cool. As much as I want the exposition, I feel like. I mean, honestly, I feel like she she knows what's up. Most likely, but I'm gonna. I've been truthful and true to my word for the most part, so. He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Dead. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, aye. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. What? Impossible. I found Mr. Shoulder's house, but he wasn't home. Don't worry. You'll find him. Or he'll find you. Is that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here. Unloaded a few... Oh, okay. So at least my supplies are here. Not a soul. Kenneth is going to be in one of the crates. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at, sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Did at least send me some money? In the crate? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Okay. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom. Just north of the plough and furrow. Oh, okay. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. I missed the plaque, but we saw the storeroom, so. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard's shoulder invited me to... Yeah, I don't know if we ever asked him about it. I like to excavate it. never got past Leonard's shoulder. Right. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? This is a little more forthcoming about it. I can't remember. Of course not. Tell it. Please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. 
That's if, if I ever get to Yeah, if I find the fucker. I'm sure you will. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the you'll see. Thank oh, it just you. repeats that, okay. Farewell for Tara. Alrighty. Oh, hey, buddy. Cyril, my man. Good day to you, Cyril. How do, lass? What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. It is no place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway. No more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one myself. You He's like an anti-train spotter. I love it. Spotting trains just to hate on them. Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. Goodbye. Cyril rules. Oh, they should have made it. They should have done a makeshift plush for him. Good day. Yes. I noticed your spectacular fossil. Oh, okay. We couldn't talk about it unless we looked at it. I collect them. This one is called an ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. Ammonite. Though. From the Jurassic period, I'd venture. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively modern history. Oh, I. Well, I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. Mood. Yep. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Aye. <sighs> Speak to you later. All right. Postman Pete over here. Is it above the store? Oh, not there up here hey buddy that must be the postmaster's storeroom hello good day i haven't seen you in Bewley before i'm just visiting oh there's the plaque on the wall next to the door okay it's gray so it's hard to see many visitors my name's henry henry long nice to meet you long long man wonderful what a treat you seem in a good mood mr long it's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. I don't know the geography of England to know um, where Derby is, but... Is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Around this time, yeah, it would be. Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. We got a Luddite. I will born my man. This very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. To be fair, Luddites were more about believe, workers' rights than anti-technology. It just manifested in beating the shit out of some technology. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbor. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Oh, where the fuck Curses. is he? I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Motherfucker, we're breaking in. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight, could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye, funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No, not for a long while. Hesitation now. again. Why do you ask? 
It's a long story, but I was to meet him in... Again, he could have just been thinking about it, but... Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? No. Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. What do you do with yourself? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station, which brings us lovely new faces. So there's a people watcher. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby. Yep, I knew he was going to come up. Is the worst offender. I love that guy. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Yuli. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye. The scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for a nail right now, actually. We haven't seen the couple that were arguing at the one table. We haven't seen them at all yet. Outside of the bar. Really? No. Wait. Do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tab? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anywhere. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. Royal Mail, Postmaster's residence. Okay. This must be the local post office. He looks a little chirpier than your average Bewley resident. We didn't look at him before talking to him, so I just wanted to see if. Or at window. That looks There's like it. Crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. Can't think of anything else to talk about right now. Okay. The postmaster isn't home. But my crate is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. All right. So we probably have to find a way to distract him. Oh, actually, let me ask him about the necklace. Is this yours? No, not mine. No. Right. Hello. I Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? That like a wheelbarrow. Never mind. Goodbye. Ooh. Goodbye, miss. Good day. Hello, miss. Are you sure? Also, well, later in the day, we could also see if the cobbler's back. I really must find it. I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, miss. All right. Oh. I don't think anyone is home. I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Oh, we might also get a leader. As you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. Fantastic. So, yes, I'll open an account for you, to be settled at the end of your stay. Sounds good. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. The necklace. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye. It's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. I found Mr. Shoulders home, thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful. So you've met our vicar then? Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed.
So, did old Leonard apologize for his absence? Not quite. No. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. I've decided to find Hobbs Barrow without Mr. Shoulder's aid. Are you sure that's a wise idea, lass? What other choice do I have? I have a feeling he is avoiding me. Do you know where I can find the Barrow? No, sorry. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. All right. What so we're set if he does show up. Hanswick. A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, eh? a good fellow. Where does he live? Well, he wasn't around to ask about Panswick earlier. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an item of value as a deposit. I'll give it back to you at the end of your stay, when it will be time to pay the piper. Goodbye. See you soon. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? Can I take a closer look at it? Jingle jangle. Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. Hopefully we have enough money by the end of it to pay for that, but whatever. Are. That's two pence on your account. Thank right. you. Most agreeable. Sometimes you just gotta grip and sip. I'm imagining it saves every time you uh, rack up more of a debt. Alright, um... I guess we could talk to what's his thoughts about uh having opened a tab. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. Doors have locks for this very reason. Oh. I clicked right. on something else. Oh, one drink my bad. won't take long. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. The rocket weren't Stevenson's only design, you know. Before that, there were the Blucher and the Locomotion. Oh, he's a train fan. It would have to be the Lancashire Maybe. Witch. I believe he built that in 1828. In Newcastle, of course. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. I couldn't even get a word in. He likes a good chin wag, our Henry. He certainly does. Is this tankard still there? No, okay, so... Probably don't have to revisit that. I don't know how else I would distract him. Maybe we didn't check the cobbler either. Hmm, no one here. I don't think anyone is home. At least we check around the other house and see if anybody's. I should leave it alone. Hanging out. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. Same. Big mood. All right. Uh. There's nothing else I wish. Right, want some cakes. We didn't want to mess with the mushrooms earlier. I feel like they're going to come up eventually, but... Let me see if anybody's at the cairn. Probably not. I 
vehicle just takes us to, uh, yeah, it just takes us out to his house. I mean, worse comes to worse, we can just try knocking on it again. We only have four more locations to unlock, so that's interesting. One's almost definitely, a uh, what's his fuck's his manner, where we're gonna go get shot at, I guess. John Purchase, dearly beloved husband of Florence. So we said no more conversation with her. Nobody's home here. That, like, our st our stay ends in a... Uh, well, if it's two days, we'll definitely have the necklace back to return it, so... It's locked. Nope. Okay. Where'd your brother go? Pardon? He took her and ran off. I hate him. Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes. My favorite. Mommy made her for me. She's so beautiful. Wally is the worst brother in the whole world. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him <laughs> to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm Daddy's favorite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Where do you live? Well, I guess we'll go find him. Okay, so that'll be the east side out of the way. And then these probably where I saw the apple tree. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Do it. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Bank? Oh, her brother's not here to shush her, too. I have, yes. Yeah! You have. We aren't supposed to talk about it. Why not? Would you like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle. For there we go. You will? Yes! But don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. Can do. I promise. Please find Myrtle first. I miss her. I will. Goodbye. Bye, Mi- I can't see how that will help me. What do you mean? Free shrub! Oh, the vomit's not there anymore. Thought it'd be funny if it still was. Okay. Oh, it's a red squirrel, not a fox. Okay. Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. That's almost definitely one of the map locations. All right. Um... Good day to you, sir. I'll do. What do you make of Henry Long? Oh, yeah, we can get opinions on Long, too. An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah! You're an outsider. I'd expect you to have such a bad opinion. <laughs> but Henry, dick. he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Come on, then, lass. Follow me. I'm gonna rake up such a tab. So then, it turns around... I like that we're getting these little chats. It's cute. Why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. They're both Why flammable. Says, because they both lose their bark once they're dead. Oh, dang, that went darker than I went. Very droll, Cyril. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, lass. Ta for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. Ah. Thanks again for the ale, lass. 
Now leave me be. So we're at least six pence, maybe eight, if, uh... Oh no. I don't, I don't know if we had a drink along with them there. It's eight for the one we had with, uh... Long. I'm talk with Tillit about, let's see if he has anything to say about Long, and then... I can't think of anything else. Nope. Okay. I wanted to see if there were any exits to the station that we couldn't My go to earlier. Don't walk on railroad tracks. Okay, nothing changed here. So I guess we've got the Myrtle mission. We still can't do anything at the Barrow, really, until we get the crate, so... That's got the I tools in it. I feel like the trowel's not going to do me much good, you know? Must find Hobbs Barrow. What did I tell you last time? Not to be found digging around in those things. Goodbye. Dara. Good day. Jane tells me you've. And what if I did? You've taken Myrtle away. Sorry. Right click again. She kicked me. Look at this bruise on my leg. They actually did do a darker pixel for it. That's great. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin. You don't know what she can be like. Besides, Myrtle is gone now. What? I've given her to the fair folk. Very rare. The mushroom rank. Mushroom rank. Yeah. Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Are you sure you don't know anything about Hobbs Barrow? I would very much like to find it. No. Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of their tiny belts. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells, you'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that door back. That'll just bring bad luck for all of us. Goodbye. A humble... Nobody home. All right. So I guess keeping your eye for bells too, but I'm pretty sure it's just the mushroom ring. The road disappears over. like something has been buried in the middle. That's what the trowel's for. Don't know if I like that. Oh, flashback. Okay. I thought we'd just like a leaf to leave. Stop leaving your toys lying about the place. Okay. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. What was in the doll that made it food worthy to a fox? Miss Bowles looks cross. What's for supper, madame? It'll be nothing but a glass of water and a worm if you don't fetch your dolly right this instant. It's the gateway to the fairy kingdom. Hello, 
fairies. <laughs> Hello. There she is. There you are, Josephine. See if there's anything else to look out before I grab her. Foxes eat you. That you have there, little bird. Is that her dad before the accident? She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Kind of disappointed she's aristocratic, but whatever. That's the gateway to their kingdom. That's where Joseph. Makes sense. That's how you would get into an education. Now, you get listen to me. Archaeology uh, specialization. You're old enough now to. Back in the day. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure... Next, you're going to tell me Santa Claus isn't real. Father Christmas. I'm sorry, we're in England. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please, always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. We're about to learn it's not hogwash, in our way. Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? Lovely. This must be Jane's ragdoll. Look at it writhing away. Look at it. Hmm. You're coming with me, little fellow. I shall name you Kenneth. I've already taken one. All right. Shout out to Kenneth. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. Oh, maybe, maybe that's our bait for whatever is living that's in the hole. strange. Hall. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. We picking locks, baby. But we still got to get what's his futz off of a uh, watch. Okay. It's Jane's creepy ragdoll. It's little Kenneth. A sharp hairpin could be useful. I wonder if you get uh, the more stretch into the distance, different worm names if you pick different ones specifically. Alright, let's go uh, run the doll back. What, other side of the church and then head north, right? I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! What? Oh, Come fuck. back! God damn it. It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. I'm not eternally against the idea of kids, but I am in hey. no hurry. Being an uncle is trying enough sometimes. <laughs> Jane? Jane, get out of there! Don't make me come in. Fine. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. I don't think that would work. A 
I thought we'd have to bait her out. Or let the worm in there, though. Clod by clod. That should do it. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Jane? Jane? Oh, we have a match. Curses. The useless thing blew out. Okay, so we need some form of light. Lantern. Like, oh, maybe the candle stick got replaced by now. Actually, he's got a lantern. Can I borrow that? I have one just like this. I have one just. <sighs> I have nothing else. All right, we'll check for the candle. Otherwise, it's got to be crate mode. Candle has Wait, is oh shoot, is 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 the old guy still here? Because if he's still here, then I could probably buy a drink for Yeah, alright, now we buy a drink for long. They're gonna get in an argument, and then I can go pick the lock. That's gotta be it. That's the only thing I can imagine being the way. Alright. So it costs two drinks, but we figured it out. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another? I suppose one more. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. In which I start some shit. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! There we go. Thank you, Cyril. That station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Let's go! Cyril Farnaby. A miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. And it will. I'll leave Cyril in. Brand debate. Okay. All right. Let's go pick that lock. Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. Shouts to Kenneth, doing crimes. This lock should spring right open. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Okay, where's Kenneth? Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Ms. Bateman, I beg your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London. I cannot join you in Bewley. I've packed the usual equipment and pray you will find local assistance in my absence. I look forward to seeing you upon your return. Yours faithfully, Kenneth Murdoch. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. You gotta get some wheels. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. Is that really another flashback out of that?
Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. Well, that's great. We're never getting those cakes, are we? Specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. This sucks. I wanted a cake. Have at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. I'd rather not go into the. Rip the horrible toilet stream. All right, what do we got here? I feel like we could ask Crozier about getting some lamp oil. There's nothing else I. Then I need more matches to light it. Look, we have the same lantern. Lantern buddies. So we do. Good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. Ooh. How much coin do you have? No, I don't. I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? What you looking for? Aye. What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. Thanks for your time. Ah. I've had this for years. It's looking like it could break at any moment, really. Ooh. Hmm. I you want a worm? Oh, that's a surprise. Oh, I right clicked. Sorry. It's little Kenneth. Hmm. 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 It's not my trial to give anyway. Okay, so we gotta find something to trade for that. I don't think anyone is home. I can't think of any. So we'd check the crate for something else. I don't wish to ca Okay. Henry Long can talk, can't he? <laughs> He's a colourful Oh yeah, we didn't talk about him earlier. Ah, drinks like a fish. Oh really? He really does. I've seen him drink this place dry and still be able to tend his garden at sunrise. The man Give me the metabolism, my man. Goodbye. See you soon. Also, we need more complimentary matches. I'll leave Cyril. I'll leave Cyril. Or some other way to light the lantern. Maybe the other kid wants a worm? The brother? Sorry, I'm bad with names. You want a worm, buddy? I don't think any... There's nothing else I wish... Okay. Can I give the worm to one of the birds? If I can get access to the window box. Maybe get some eggs. Windows inaccessible. Aside from that, I've stored my a box. Nothing in there that I can access. I don't wish to. No bowl or a. I 
I can't think of... I can't think... I don't think anyone... There's nothing else... I, I don't think anyone really wants to see my worm. Yeah, mood. Um... I can't think of things we could chisel. I may be a bar Are there Oh wait. We might be able to take the fossil. This is where I dug up Jane's ragdoll. This is where I As much as we're not supposed to take the Ammon's Horn. We're gonna curse the hell out of this village, aren't we? She doesn't care because she's not superstitious. All right, that makes sense. Oh, and now the kids aren't there to yell at me if I do it, so. Blended. I've managed to extract it in one piece. They aren't mine to take. Damp rag dolls. All right, fossil for oil. Ironically enough. An exceptional ammonite fossil. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then, tis a beauty, that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. Okay. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. All right, now how am I going to light this thing, though? Opened tin of pa My lantern is fueled and ready for action. I guess it just works now. Okay. Off to the hole. So I'm not sure what to do with the worm, but I maybe it'll come Let's up. Put this lantern to good use. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Jane, come out at once. She's not in here, is she? Cool badger. What are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? Saying hi to a badger, apparently. You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard up the hill. We've done that. See some muddy fields on the horizon. Yeah, we got a lot of those here. Bryden's farm. Oh. Hobbs Barrow is there. Got it. And thanks for Don't tell any grown-ups, sorry. My Hit the right click again. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. All right. See you in hell. What do I still have in inventory then? Lantern, chisel, trowel. All right. The north from the church. 
Okay, yeah, that, that's the that's up to the back. So we want the one on the other side. As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. I mean, you're still an out-of-towner, so I, mean, I kind of understand it. it. was actually fear. Ah. Okay, this is reflecting later. Oh, yeah, this is probably her book or whatever. Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Ooh, it's not a good word. All right. The gate opens out into a vast tilled field. I have no desire to wander the furrows. You're no fun. The entrance to the farm. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. My favorite. Not mine to what a wild looking Oh, that was the goat. Uh, Jane was worried about the uh, all being fed, too. Easy girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. Can't you want a worm, buddy? I should leave the goat alone. Okay. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of all crops go to feed his animals. All right. What's he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. How many animals does he have? He's here to pick up the crops. I see. <sighs> uh, kind of do the barrow last, because it's probably a sour subject. The old girl does a better job of protecting this farm than any hound would. <laughs> she still produces a lot of milk for That's what the milk smell was. I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? Ha! <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard, he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging. Ooh, is Leonard's shoulder a ghost? Spooky. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Great. Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. Oh. I, I'm Great. sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife. I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Not bad. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Clearly. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like. That must have been hard. You lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Oh. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him. He never said, okay. Hour, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. Reinforcing it, I guess. You'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. Oh. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The land has reclaimed it. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. 
I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. Huh. I would too if a guy lost a hand and cut and hanged himself. To look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed. Oh, Bakewell's where um the postmaster went. Okay. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock. Even Lord Panswick. We grow okay. food for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in the fields, lass, pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't Good for them. Easy. How splendid. Aye, my wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. You haven't seen Mr. Good Sean shit. for some right. time. I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow. Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? Tuberculosis? It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Seems like a low move to but Samuel boarded up that barrow for appeal to his uh, relations, to but fate, perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick, or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? You wish to see proof of- I can't- what proof- Oh, I have that letter. Okay, I'm gonna snooze so we can show him the letter. But after we show him the letter and stuff, we'll uh... Thanks for your- ta -da. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. We're getting the title over and over, it's great. Lennon making bold promises, I see. I just didn't want to inter interrupt the uh, conversation Maybe before we hit the uh, ad break. But yes, you can have a look at it. Okay. Thank you. Any road, once you set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting out to do with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra set on a hill ahead. Thank you again. Oh, you probably bummed his wife on the way too. Appreciate it. Okay. I can't think of anything else. Cool. Well, I guess I'll roll the ad break now. Jrb. I'm judging by the headings on this. Um, well, don't worry about that right now. They did say it was a long walk. Oh, it picked up rain again too. I should have brought my umbrella. I have been saying that for how long now? Perhaps I could take a closer look. Cool rock. R. A-R. I haven't a clue what that can be referring to. I'm trying to think of what last names with R we've run into. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. We have a title. We have, well, yeah, we have the, ob the subject of the title. We've gotten the title a few times already. Barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secret? I'm worried the A is for Ammon, though, since they mentioned that as being an alternate god here. Alright, um... What's the deal with that barrow? That smell... earthy and sweet. That's the description of the achievement, too. That smell, or the intro sweet. Three, two, 
one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. I feel like you're gonna sneeze coming. Hold up. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck! Thank you, Daddy. Now I'm ready. Okay, they, I'm, I'm starting to wonder, like, clearly her dad was also an archaeologist. And they said there were other guys on the excavation team that were out, possibly out of towners. Was he one of the guys who went to the barrow? And that's what fucked him up, is the question. So you haven't been taught the nature of the uh, accident yet. We don't dig with our oh, that's right. I have to use the trial to do it. Nothing here. Daddy, he's buried. All right, do it again. And we dig with our hands if we have to. Damn it. We can be more people if we want. It's fine. No treasures here. Treasure. Do we got a jug? Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very oh. old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. I hope he told her to dig gently, otherwise he's risking damage to that urn. Well. Love me some turned earth, don't love farming. Oh, she's just a dad. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. All right. I feel like it's not going to be that easy to do right now. But... I love that we get the trudge back, too. It's so good. Just a, like that little moment of contemplation. Falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. Okay. I shouldn't disturb him at this late hour. Fair enough. All right, to the inn we go. Also, yeah, what's on my map list? We still have three more locations. Again, I feel like the manor is going to come up at some point. There was past the logs. That's probably one. Then maybe just a direct shot into the barrow? I, I don't know what the third one would be. Hope we couldn't get cakes today. Hopefully we get some tomorrow. I love the fog. That's so good. Alright, well clearly somebody lives above the cobbler, so... The sign is in a shabby state, but the shop appears to be a cobbler's... Okay, I think we saw that on the way in. Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. Tis truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? I guess we can chat up the locals before we go to bed. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Yeah, there are actually a lot of fossils in the UK. Like... What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave oh, no, um... The most recent is always the best. What's his name? Uh, Atomic Shrimp on the you YouTube. I do. Points him out sometimes, usually at the beaches. Of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. All of your findings? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, 
I leave those in place. We respect the dead. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Hi. Speak to you later. Oh, uh, these look like a couple of working gents. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you gonna do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am gonna knock his bloody block off. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off. Okay, so much for that. Charming. Worth a shot. Not yet. He's engaged in a bout of pin finger. Such a brutal hobby. Apparently, a Good long time sir. classic. Uh, I'll leave you to it. It's Herbert, the local. I don't wish to wake him up. Oh, he's snoozing. What a guy. Oh, we got, we got, we gotta take a photo of snoozing Herbert. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here. Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. Fair enough. He seems even more wound up than usual. I must say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. Then where is she going to the bathroom? She's got to shit sometime. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman? There are stories connected to that place. Yes, yeah, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far, there's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Goodbye. See you soon. I'm worried about racking on my tab too high, but I feel like time for bed. Tomorrow I shall. I'll probably order one a day at the very least. My excavation. Okay, well, that seems like the end of day one. Yep. Oh, this motherfucker. Tired. Gonna buy you a drink. One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Always be tying one on. Mr. Tillett, alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. That does happen sometimes. Sometimes you remember what. <laughs> I love this guy. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. He clearly has a problem, but he's having fun with it. To Leonard's shoulder. Wherever he may be. Kampai. I've been meaning to ask you something. Oi? Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? I don't know. Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke He's building a squad. Shoulder's letter. His proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and baron. I also want to ask um, the farmer about that stone. He Maybe he knows who, what the initials are for. Prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mister. If nothing else, I can check for our last names at the uh, church and stuff. In promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. 
Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. Ho, 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 ho. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> I thought Cyril was going to pipe up again. Right, Mr. Tillett. I've had another argument with Agnes. Oh no. I. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is. I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, he's got trauma. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got it. Tuberculosis confirmed. I've been joking about it this whole time, but there it is. We got it. We got it, baby. She went everything to me. Aww. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. It's fine, buddy. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She gets a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected. Beth, I didn't see if we could look at the plaque on the bench. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. That's I, good. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I, I might try it again the next. Uh, yeah, I might try it again on the next session to him. He's still Check alive, it out. but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful! He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of. He had to have been on the previous dig. I was so young. He had to have been. Is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim. Come on. Memories of him. It just writes itself. Him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I do anything to bring him back to the man he was. So is the visit to the hospital at the start for going morning, back to tell him about Hobbs Barrow? Life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. I guess we'll find out, but like, I'm just, just postulating here. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. We've got a buddy. A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Can't pie again? Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. Let's go! But I did. And another after that. And another. We are not going to be in a great state the next morning. The frustrations of my visit to Beaulieu's... Pedial Light hasn't been invented yet. Stanley's finest day. Neither has Gatorade. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. I love how they're slurred out. Song. You're incorrigible. Please. This is great. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, then. I like how her poshness slips off, uh... After a few drinks, too. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads, I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull. Thank you. What a delight. Seems raining every goddamn night here. Although, yeah, it was getting foggy, so that means moisture was rolling in. Now what? Oh, that's freaky. Uh, yeah, big glowing orb. Presumably the sun or moon. Was not out last time we were at this part. Oh, there's the barrow. Who's this guy? Hi. Good day, Gnomish. Come on.
goblin man. What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? You were here, 25 years ago. I fucking called it. You were deep down with the others. You were there, and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then. Oh, well, this could also be bait from the Fair Folk. I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. Maybe we're bringing something back. Maybe the intro bit is us bringing something back from the Barrow to try and help him. This is not a dream. Okay. What the fuck? This rules. I love this. All right, well, we'll get whatever her morning monologue is, and then I'll check out that proof next time. Goodness, that was a terrible... Also a great place to end on, honestly. All right, what does the manual save as well? Rules.